tomorrow's love. The most important pursuits have never been easy. And so, despite all odds, despite all adversity, we will uncompromisingly pursue pure products, pure business practices, pure love for humanity, pure intentions, together. We say 2020 is just the beginning. I want to officially welcome all of you to our Pursue 2020 doTERRA Global Connection. This is our biggest gathering ever, with tens of thousands of you joining us from all around the world. We've been working very hard to prepare meaningful and valuable messages and training. I suppose it's not possible to duplicate the electric-like energy that happens when 30,000 of us are gathered together in person. And like you, we are looking forward to the return of those days. In the meantime, as we gather online, I do not think any of you will be disappointed in what you're going to experience in the next couple of days. Now, we are in the middle of unprecedented and challenging times, unequal to nearly all of our memories. Sadly, we recognize that some of you have been directly impacted by this global virus. For all of those who have struggled, suffered loss, or are working to find a foothold today, please know that our thoughts and hopes are for many brighter moments ahead for you and for your families. You have our love and support. I'm sure there are many more of you who may be experiencing significant economic stress. Few, if any of us, has escaped the fear, anxiety, frustration, or even anger that seem to be causing so much upheaval and discord in our world today. One of our goals over the next couple of days is to help restore trust and hope, perhaps something we all could use a little more of. In 2008, doTERRA was in its infancy. The United States was entering the most severe recession it had ever experienced since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Confidence seemed to be at an all-time low. I imagine that many people likely looked at me and my partners with questioning, wondering eyes, wondering why we would even consider launching a business at that time. Truth is, at least in part, doTERRA was deeply affected by our early circumstances and is what it is today because of when and how we began. doTERRA was built on a foundation of sacrifice, scarcity of resources, and gratitude. For the first 13 months of our existence, none of the founders were paid, no one received any medical benefits. We had to be very conservative and very careful with our very limited resources. We didn't know if and when the recession would end. There was no crystal ball to tell us that everything would work out in time. We just knew that we felt inspired to build something that could change the world and that would bless many lives. We knew it would take a lot of effort, and we knew it would take time. We lived the principle of delayed gratification, hoping that our money would hold out, that rewards would come later, and that we could stay true to our mission and purpose and desires of our heart. Today, some of the challenges that we face feel very familiar, but today they are global in nature, extending far beyond the United States and impacting the entire world. When we look back and see the parallels between now and then, we appreciate that doTERRA was built for times like this. Our deep commitment to purity, quality, 
seems to matter even more than it ever did before. Now few, if any, could have predicted the extremes of our current climate, including us. But you can have confidence in doTERRA. We've continued to govern the company along the same principles that were so important to us in our beginning. We are grateful that we haven't needed to lay off a single employee during this crisis of the past six months. As a company, we have been rewarded with a team that has dug in, embraced the new and ever-changing paradigm, and has done truly amazing things. While we never expected a global pandemic, we have always planned carefully, adding protections, building redundancy, preparing to weather any storm. We have a plan. In fact, we have a plan B and a plan C. And because of our beginnings, this has become part of our very nature. And today, we are free to pursue our mission, striving to pursue what's pure in everything that we do. Looking back, we're grateful for the difficult times and the galvanizing effects of sacrifice and the impact that our conservative approach to business has had on our ethos, and our foundation. Today, doTERRA has become the gold standard in essential oils in the entire industry. And it's not just us saying so. We've taken our global botanical network and scientific and medical partnerships places that others simply cannot go or are not willing to follow. Purity and quality are the strengths of doTERRA. And as I said earlier, now it matters more than ever. We've had to really scramble the past six months, working hard to meet the increased demands for our products. Our amazing team has embraced these challenges. And as you will hear from some of them throughout the event, I'm sure that you'll agree that our capabilities are greater. Our supply is healthier and production is increasing. We are significantly stronger and better prepared to meet the future challenges. Some amazing achievements have happened this past year. Despite the challenges and constraints of a pandemic, we've managed to complete significant humanitarian projects around the world. One of these is the hospital in Somaliland serving over 500,000 people in one of the most remote and difficult regions of the world. Even the World Health Organization was stunned recently upon learning of the completion of this project. You'll be hearing more about this, as well as numerous other significant humanitarian projects around the globe, all made possible because of you, your generosity, and your passion. Nothing of significance ever happens without passion. Of late, some of our priorities have shifted closer to home. We are excited and committed to taking action and doing our part with the support of our new Inclusion and Diversity Committee, helping all of those who feel marginalized are perhaps less visible. Together, we will learn and we hope to soften hearts, to open minds, to facilitate healing. We're working to build a more united, stronger doTERRA family. Perhaps some of you have found some silver linings during this pandemic experience. Perhaps you've taken a little more time to become reacquainted with your family members or friends. Perhaps you've used this time to refill your cup and to recharge your batteries. Hindsight is always 2020. For me, understanding the past helps me to appreciate and better understand the future. And the future is very bright. So what does the future look like? As I said, it helps to look back at the past. Almost exactly six years ago, Emily Wright and I were returning from the first trip to Somalia. We were gone for about two weeks on that trip. While we were gone, the entire company moved to this new, beautiful global campus. I remember going back to our old, now empty offices that weekend, where we had our humble beginnings. As I cleared out my office and boxed up my personal effects, I found myself completely alone in a completely empty building. As I walked around in the silence, observing the small, 10 foot by 10 foot room where we had our very first product store, I found myself saying, what were we thinking? We were starting with nothing. It was a recession, so much fear and uncertainty. Yet we had hope, perhaps a fool's hope, but we locked arms with our friends who also had hope. 
who went on to become great leaders, influencing so many and doing so much good. Today feels like another beginning. I hope that you will look to the future with hope and join us in building your future, increasing your circle of influence and making a difference in this amazing world. Remember, when you bring the power of the many together and your teams to form the power of one, that's when the miracles begin to happen. That's when we begin to discover that each of us possesses far more potential for influence and good than we have ever imagined. Now it's my honor to introduce Simone Lesu. Simone joined doTERRA in 2016 and has made a huge impact on the entire doTERRA family. His optimism and love of essential oils is contagious. Simone is part of everyone's family. Please join me in welcoming your host for this morning, Director of U.S. Sales, Simone Lesu. doTERRA family and friends, welcome to Pursue 2020. Whether you're a seasoned vet and you have a handful of conventions under your belt, maybe all of them, or this is your very first one, whatever the case is, we're absolutely thrilled to have you. Now, this being a global event, we know we have a lot of people tuning in from all over the world. We acknowledge that, but drop a comment below exactly where you're coming from. Here's the thing, wherever you are and whatever time zone you're in, we hope that you're excited for an amazing event. But before we move into the action-packed agenda today, I'd like to bring it back to why we do what we do. Our mission at doTERRA is to change lives. And this is a charge that we're constantly pursuing. Pursue, the theme of this entire event. The definition of pursue is a dedicated engagement of purpose. We pursue peer products, peer business practices, peer love of humanity, and peer intentions. Now, we'll dive into what that truly means throughout the next few days, but just know that this is a beautiful, beautiful movement that millions around the world are so proud to be part of. Now, my friends, from start to end, you'll learn what makes doTERRA different, how we produce the purest essential oils on the planet, and how together we're truly making a difference on a global scale. Today, we've got panels of experts on a variety of great topics. Our founding executives will go back to the very beginning of doTERRA, You'll take a journey through our labs to a different parts of the world. Today, you'll learn why purity and potency truly matter. What does it mean for a product to be pure? Is it the strongest, the most effective, or does it also mean that it was the most resilient? In a world full of toxic imitations and adulterated imposters, it resisted. Never allowing efficiency to give way to embellishments. It never chose profit over potency. It chose to be exactly what the world desperately needs. Something real. Something to believe in. Something that lifts inspires, connects, heals. A pure product is more than just a seal on a bottle or the highest industry certifications and endorsements. It is the thousands of decisions made along the way that insisted the ideal and protected the promise. A pure product is a mission, a belief that by adding nothing, it in turn offers everything. Now, oftentimes we're asked, what makes our essential oils different? It's a common question. When you're serving your family, your loved ones, your communities, quality matters. We know our essential oils will do what we say they will do, and quality brings that confidence. This has been in the doTERRA DNA from day one. Well, sometimes I, I look back and I, I just wonder, what were we thinking? What was I thinking? We went for a long, long period of time with no resources. And when I mean no resources, I mean no resources. People told us we were crazy to go all in. You know, is this really going to work? I think some of the most beautiful things can emerge 
through trial and through difficult times. I had been a physician for a long period of time, and I'd had a patient who came to see me, and they would ask me, Dr. Hill, what do you think about the essential oils? And I made the mistake one time of saying, I think that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. She looked me right in the eye and she said, I am so disappointed to hear that because that's done more for me than you or any of your colleagues or anyone has ever done for me. And it intrigued me. And over time, I became more intrigued. I became involved with essential oils. And now for the last several decades, this is all that I have focused on and all that I have done. I remember when I first came into the essential oil industry, I thought they were voodoo oils. I thought they were really, really strange. It wasn't long before I started using oils on my kids, and I was amazed at what I was able to do and how it empowered me as a mom to take charge of my family's health care. So I was a huge skeptic. Parents were educators. My father was a professor of physics. So I just wasn't raised with anything but allopathic Western medicine. I learned over the years how effective they, they were and can be, especially if they're pure. After working 10 years in the essential oil industry, I found myself leaving uh, for integrity purposes because I knew that essential oils had to be pure. The desire of my heart was just to go home and raise my children. And I hadn't been home very long before my husband came to me and said, there's something more you're supposed to do. And as he said this to me, I actually was very angry with him because my heart said, I want to be home with my kids. And he said, sweetheart, you're not listening. There is something you're supposed to do with Dave and Dr. Hill with these oils. And I said, what do you mean these oils? I've tried all the essential oils out there. There's nothing that meets the quality standards our family needs to use for our health care. And he smiled at me and he said, I know, you're supposed to find them. Stop thinking with your head and start thinking with your heart. And it was in that moment that I knew. It all came together and I had such a grand vision of going out and finding the world's most pure, most potent essential oils and educating mothers like me how to take charge of their health care. So it was in that moment before fear took over that I picked up the phone and I called Dave. And Emily Wright called me at the time and just said, What if we could go out and source the most pure essential oils on the planet and bring them to the world in a mainstream fashion? And he got really emotional. And Dave doesn't get emotional. And actually it was that right then and there, that was the genesis. Uh, for me, and I, I just kind of felt strongly like, yeah, we're going to start a company. So I hung up the phone with Dave, I picked up the phone, and I called Dr. Hill. And as I called him, I still remember he kind of giggled. And I said, Doc, this isn't funny. I, I'm, I'm serious about this. What if we could go out and find these pure oils like we've always wanted to do? And what if we could educate people to really understand the power behind these oils? And he said, no, Emily, I'm not laughing because I think your idea is crazy. I'm laughing because I was just getting ready to call you and ask you the very same question. It started with an initial little small meeting in an Italian restaurant. In the far corner. And we met for five and a half hours until they finally kicked us out of the restaurant because we weren't buying food anymore. And we just started to dream. We would meet anywhere we could find some space to meet. And it was in some strange places. Of course, the, the basement of the Orma Library was one. We got too rambunctious and they finally kicked us out of the library. Sometimes it was in the basement of our homes. I remember not telling my kids, you know, that I was unemployed and starting a new thing, but the dad was working on a project in the basement. As I did the business plan, I started to realize that this was going to be big. I just knew that with such a good team and product that had changed our lives, we felt like this was going to be significant. So as we began in the spring of 2008, that's when we had a massive falling out with the housing market in the United States. 
and there was a lot of panic and a, and a lot of fear. We looked at starting this company. The first thing you think is, uh, I got to raise money. I've got to get capital. And we, we set out to do that initially. And uh, actually ended up, the four of us, back in New York City, visiting with some very high profile people. And as we gathered together that next morning at that conference table, and we've got, you know, all of these Manhattan style managers that are meeting with us, and they quizzed us for hours. Finally, at the end of the day, they looked at us and they said, we believe that your business model is going to work. We believe that you will be successful and we want to fund your venture. We'll give you $5 million. And we are all, of course, felt extremely elated. They were willing to fund the company, but of course they, they were interested in 51% uh, and control. And I just remember the feeling we had as we walked away from that conference table. And the four of us found ourselves in front of the Statue of Liberty. And I remember looking across the water. Almost as if on cue, as I recall, we all just grew somewhat silent. And as we looked out over the water, and I looked at the Statue of Liberty, what rung true to me is, we're doing this to give people freedom. And if we take their money, we can't make people free. And we can't make this dream that we have a reality because they'll never allow us to bring the quality of essential oils that we know we have to have to light. Because they'll be looking for an exit strategy, they'll be looking for a return on their investment, and that can't be part of the equation. I remember standing right next to Dave Sterling and Dave looked at me and in kind of a somewhat shocking way. He asked me, how much money do you have, Doc? And I said, I, I don't know. And he said, how much can you pull together? And I said, I don't know. And he asked each one of us in succession, and before we left the park that afternoon, uh, we had made the decision that we were unable to take any resources from anybody, and instead, we would all leverage everything we have. We took the equity out of our homes, we cashed out 401ks, we liquidated everything we owned in order for this dream to come to fruition. And so as I expressed this to my wife, I, I remember very clearly, she just looked at me and said, well, I trust you. You'll take care of us and we'll be fine. And we had family members even come to us to say, you're foolish. Your family is going to be homeless. So we went all in, everything. We didn't hold anything back. We thought it would be for just a couple of months that we went without any income, but it was 13 months. Those final months, I mean, we're eating almonds and yogurt and <laughs> telling our kids they can't go to dance practice and they can't play sports because we don't have enough money. But having that belief that it was all going to be worth it, and I remember a day that we had $5,000 left in our account. $5,000 because we had just put together this big oil order. And we didn't know how we were going to make payroll. We didn't know how we were going to make commissions. And just to see how doors open every single time, as long as we continued to step forward, the doors open. People ask me sometimes, you know, how, how were you guys able to do what you did? And, uh, you know, but everybody rolled their sleeves up and we did every job. We did this job, this job, this job. I was supposed to go out and find these precious oils. So I started calling people. And every single person would say, of course, our oils are 100% pure. And that's when I realized almost all essential oils that are sold out there are sold through brokers. These brokers were very smart people, often having very sophisticated labs. And the oils were almost always changed. Most were not pure, most were synthetically created. I had probably a hundred plus different samples that had been sent to my home. And every time we would meet, you know, Dave, Dr. Hill would say, Emily, have you, have you found the oils yet? And I'd have to say, not yet. Like, are we going down the right path? Is this really what we're supposed to do? I remember one beautiful day. 
I opened up my doorstep and five oils showed up all in the same day. It was frankincense, lavender, tea tree, lemon, and peppermint. As I smelled these bottles, I called up Dave and I called up Dr. Hill and I said, I found the oils. They said, don't you dare open them until we're all together. We knew that these oils were absolutely pure and it gave us just enough confidence, just enough faith to continue stepping forward. I remember that first discussion we had. We talked about the culture of the company. What type of soul do we want doTERRA to have? And we realized that these oils are experiential. And we realized it had to be a person-to-person -person model. We had to bring people together. We've got to have a culture of giving back. We have to have a culture of caring. Locking arms with the people who are putting the seeds in the ground, who are harvesting these products. It's making sure that their needs are met. As I look back on it today with doTERRA, it's, uh, it's, it's overwhelming to me to see the impact it is around the world. There's a lot of sacrifice, but again, those are days we look back on, um, you know, with some pride. Sacrifice is a really important piece in setting the foundation. Today, we've empowered nearly 8 million families all around the globe. We're now filling 315,000 bottles of oil every single day. And just to think about it on that scale just warms my heart knowing that every single bottle is changing somebody's life on both sides of the bottle. I think this work has such purpose. It's like, how, how can we stop? We have single-handedly changed the acceptance of essential oils in science and in medicine. We are so committed to this work. We are so humbled to be stewards of what nature has created so perfectly for us. And we're so grateful for all of our amazing employees, for all of our amazing wellness advocates, for all of our amazing customers all around the world. We haven't changed in our mission. We haven't changed in our purpose. We're still true to those things that very early on were important. If doing the right thing was important then, doing the right thing is important now. If helping and giving service to other people was important then, it's important now. If sourcing oils differently and doing what had not been done before was important then, it's important now. We feel like, as crazy as it sounds, we're still just beginning.